Are we online? Yeah, well, we want to welcome everyone online today. In fact, let's give a hand for all those that are watching with us today online. Now, before I do preach the word, I actually have a couple things that I want you to uh, take into your heart and be very serious. You got a voice, and uh, uh, it's not a surprise to you that the world is changing very quickly. And uh, now we're all having to wear masks and do all that stuff. But I want to suggest something to you is that what we remember democracy to be is also changing very rapidly. And uh, you've got a voice. And I tell you this, what you say matters very, very much. And in this hour, you are needed. Now, there's a bill that's being passed right now because COVID's happening. There's quite a few. And uh, I'm not here to tell you all the governmental stuff, but I am here to tell you some stuff. When you say something, things change. But the goal is to slip it under while things are happening. And here's one of the bills. It's called C6. It's being rammed through right now. And the government calls it a conversion ban therapy. And here's what it means. It means pastors and priests are jailed for two years for preaching repentance to anyone who's gender confused, I'm going to go on. Counselors are jailed for two years for offering help to anyone who, by the way, comes to them and asks for help. Let me go on. Bible shall be censored as much as other literature. And if you think that that doesn't affect you, parents may be jailed for five years for teaching their kids to accept their gender. Now, these things are being rammed through, and if you think that you don't have a voice and you can't do anything, you are completely wrong. The reason that I'm standing in here in the pulpit right now is because a coalition of over 100 churches got together and spoke and prayed together and pleaded together and made an action together. That action went to our premier who let us stay open right now. Thousands of letters, prayer, two, three times a week. Over 103 churches, doctors, lawyers. That's why we're here today, because the children, the people of God did something. And a premier who is steerable by the heart and the hand of the Lord allowed this to happen. So, Father, thank you so much for our premier. And we ask that you would continue to direct his heart in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen? One more thing before I get on to the Word of God. Um, I, I, I tell you what, if we're going to ask for boldness, then speak and say boldness. I don't mean arrogance, and I don't mean critical, and I don't mean being rude. That's, that's not the Lord. But we're going to move out in, in some, uh, some boldness. There is a media giant right now that is preaching doom and gloom. There's a media giant that is telling you that you're all going to die and that everything is completely out of control and that your only hope, and three times I have, I'm not in news a whole bunch, three times on news I've heard this, three times, that your salvation is in a vaccine. So, so I say this today. Uh, this doom and gloom narrative that's being spoken is not accurate. The Bible says to this, get wisdom and get understanding. So here's what I'm going to offer anyone who wants. If you would like to hear a different narrative from many doctors and many specialists and many professionals who are global banning together and sending and giving, and lawyers giving information to the church... If you would like that information, if you would like videos, if you would like links, all you need to do is email us and we'll send you all of those videos and all of those links so you can have a different and possibly a very real narrative that is different than what is being preached right now. Amen? Am I against the government? Not at all. God bless our government. But I am saying this, there is a voice out there that is not of the Lord that wants everyone to be afraid and wants these places absolutely empty. If you can shut the mouth of the church, you can stop everything. 
Now you have an enemy who well knows what his end is, which is why twice he has tried in great world wars to get rid of Israel. Concentration camps, kill them, do whatever. If you can remove Israel, you can stop the end times. That's what his thought is. And it's the same thing right now. That force that restrains right now, that is restraining that the Bible talks about, and nothing can happen until that force, he that is restraining is removed, is the church. When the church is removed, that day is called rapture. When that church is removed is when all the nasty stuff happens. What is that force right now? Christ in you, in us, the hope of glory. And that's why there's a mass wave of delusion coming right now and fear being preached out. If you can fill the people of God with fear, they will not talk faith. If no faith comes out, nothing happens and the enemy has his way. We are not of those who draw back to perdition, Hebrews says, but those who press forward to the saving of grace of faith. Amen? Whoa, I feel boldness just in saying that. Can I have an amen? amen. So, glory to God. Father, we, we surrender today to you. Uh, Lord, every good and perfect thing comes from you. And in this hour, Lord, let your people be bold let your people go forth. Let us, Lord, uh, be able to go forth with tremendous wisdom in this hour, as gentle as doves in this hour. And Father, I'm asking and thanking you today for words that have been seasoned for this hour. Lord, even as Angie has been speaking, your word, it is power, it is life, it is life to the hearer. It sets people free. So, Lord, I'm asking in this hour, and especially for my tongue, Lord, would you take my, my mouth and use my words today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, a lot has happened in one week. Aren't we living in those days? Wow. Uh, James and, you know, even Proverbs says this, we make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. And it used to be that we would say this, we shall go and we shall do this. In the day that we're living in right now, we shall go and then something changes and you're not going. We're going to go do this. Oh, no, you're not. So it's like what James says, rather say this, if the Lord wills it, we shall do this. And uh, that's where we're at. So Lord, let your kingdom come. But God, I'm asking that we would be so filled so assured of faith, Lord, that we would just go and grow and get all over everyone else. In Jesus' name, amen. So we made it another week, amen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, glory to God. We have, uh, we have brothers and sisters all over Canada right now that are worshiping from their homes we have some big, big churches that have been shut down because they're not in Alberta. And uh, this is a gift. And this is the time that we step out in faith. Amen? We are a massive, massive giant, and it is time to raise up. Put our fears aside and raise up. Amen? So thank you to Sonia and Adrian who spoke last Sunday on trust, I believe. That was awesome. Give him a hand. That's great. It is so good when, when I can leave and go somewhere and speak and know that everything is taken care of here. And Dale did a great job as well of doing the emceeing and, and Sylvia as well. So, so glory to God. Um, and I got to go to Grand Prairie and speak a very specific, timely word that, uh, that went forward and it was specifically for their house, but after speaking it, I realize it's not just for their house. It's for all of us, and I'm not going to preach that same one twice. There was, uh, this is my slang, there was stank anointing on that. It was crazy how heavy, heavy the presence was. I just went to speak a word, but they had, uh, whoa, Charlotte and Pastor Paul came up afterwards and they just drew all the people. And you know that they, they, they had, a, a, oh, I don't know, about 25% more people show up 
who have never come before just because they knew that something was going on. And uh, they heard that word, and my goodness. You know, it was, it was a revelation to me, too, as I was speaking it. I think as Christians, we spend so long trying to avoid persecution. We really do. And then when you find out that this is the tool that God uses to refine the church, and uh, I mean, I was blown away. I just kept giving example after example after example of persecution, and every single time there was persecution, there was also an open door. A hundred percent of the time, persecution, open door. Persecution, open door. And the persecution was served as a refining tool for the children of God. It refined them. It made them sharp. And 100% of the time, whenever there was persecution, there was also an open door for the church. People were saved, set free, lives changed. Sometimes it was, it was massive areas changed. And the things that people have been praying for, they got. I have, boy, presence of God just speaking of that. We spent so long trying to avoid persecution and hiding, and yet God says, this is a tool that I use, and I deliver you from it every single time. Not from it, out of it. I don't deliver you from persecution, church. I deliver you out of it. Woo! Amen. So we've been uh, addressing the core needs of people. Yeah, 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 for the church, but this is all people, and that's why... Uh, I spoke on peace first, and that we're not peace keepers, we're peacemakers, and that peace is an actual force that even Jesus used to destroy storms. Storms of the enemy that came up, you just speak peace to that thing. And that force of peace, because he's the God of peace as well, he gave to the church. And this revelation is going to grow in us. And right after that, I spoke on rest, how to go forward in anxiousness is the devil's plan, but to go forward in the power of rest is God's plan, and that's where his supernatural uh, flows. And today, uh, I want to speak on hope, which is, uh, when we first got saved, that was one of the greatest revelations that, that hit me. Uh, the power of the gospel of hope, God's hope, the way God created it, hope, his, his force, who he is, that is exclusively belongs to the church. And it's found exclusively in the church. Amen? Amen? Now, Jesus did it like that so that you would find hope. And when you find it, it would abound in you and it would grow and get bigger and bigger. And then you would go out with that hope. Even speaking of that, I don't know how many times um, when things were semi-normal, that we would have people like, uh, remember when Beaver Lake Treatment Center used to come in here? And they, they would just suck the anointing. Just, they were anointing, they were just like sponges of those guys. But they were a phenomenal example. When they would come in, they would smell, like, I mean by sense, something that's in this place. You know what it was? Hope. especially in their situation, because they, they were a contrast of what did they need the most? Hope. And they would, I remember them, they would come up here even of different beliefs. They would come up here sometimes with their, their uh, medicine bag or whatever they got going on, but they would come up, they see, and any other day outside just going about your business, that would offend you if somebody spoke some sort of different faith to you. It was mine. But they would sense hope so much. I remember them lining up. Even when we wouldn't do an altar call, they would still come up because they wanted what belongs exclusively to the children of God, hope. You know what is needed in this hour the most? Jesus, yes, but Jesus is. Look at the sign in the back. There is hope in Jesus. So we mounted that on the wall that, so when you leave, the last thing you see is that going into you. There is hope in Jesus. Amen? Here's what hope means defined. Hope means confident expectation of good. Which is this. I have nothing but confidence in God that he is going to turn my situation, whatever it is that we're going through, for good. That is hope. Which leads me to this question. If you don't know Jesus in this hour, where is your hope? 
I don't, I don't say that as some sort of critical smite towards anyone who may be even listening. I, I just say that this is the real deal. In this hour, if Jesus is not your Savior, what is your hope? Like three times I've, I've, I've heard this already just in the news. Our salvation is in vaccine. Our salvation is this. Is your hope in doctors? Is your hope in, in the government? And they're all good. But if you don't have Jesus, where is your confidence? Where is your hope lie? I say again, the, the, the greatest foundation of hope belongs and is in this church. Ambassadors of hope, amen? Hope deferred makes the heart sick, Proverbs says. But when desire comes, it is a tree of life to all. Desire means hope. When hope comes, it's like, it's like a... I like the analogy in, in, in nature. You've got this massive, big tree, and that tree gives shelter to animals. That tree gives fruit for everything that comes within its proximity. You can, you can go under its boughs and find shade. The animals can come. The birds of the field can come, and they can all nest. That is like hope in one believer. When hope comes forward and it starts to have its fruition, that hope gives life to all. Thank you, Lord. Now I'm going to blast you with a whole bunch of, of word because that's where our hope is found. So, uh, Rach, can you put up 1 Corinthians 13? Now, Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, he's teaching on spiritual gifts and love. And he says this, he says, here's three of the greatest. Now, these are, I love, I love just teaching and speaking on the, the foundational main scriptures because those are the ones that are stuck in you as soon as somebody starts to say it, you can usually repeat it because you've heard it so many times it says this and now abide faith hope and love these three but the greatest of these is love i want you to see something here faith hope and love do you see what's in the middle hope Faith, hope, and love. Hope is that substance, that binding force, that binds right to faith. Hope grabs a hold of faith and it causes it to grow and it gives it a confident expectation that God is going to do something amazing. You don't have faith without hope. Hope comes, it is this substance that gets all over faith. Your faith is directed and empowered by this thing, and then God does this. God answers your faith by you confidently expecting that he's going to do good for you. And then the outcome of your faith comes forward, your answer comes forward. You're like, yes, God came through for me. And do you know what that produces in you? This gratitude, this joy. And you start get drawn closer. Come here. I need you to come close to me, please. Okay, she's gonna be she's gonna be God. So I'm trusting carefully. Don't do that. I'm trusting in hope that confidently expecting God's going to do this. And when He answers my prayer, there's this gratitude and an actual joy that wells up in me when He's answered my prayer. It actually draws you. If God answered that prayer for me. What else would he do? What else would God do for me if he answered that one? You mean he loves me enough to do that? It makes me love God again. It makes me love people again. It draws me closer. You see, faith has nothing without hope. Confidently expecting good. But when that answer comes, it's that tree of life and it makes me love the one who gave me the answer. And if I start to love God, and here is a real truth, and it's, it's really important right now, it makes me look at people different. Yes, that's true. When, when I start to sense that love that God's got for me and that he answered, you know what, I think he'll do it for you too. And then I start to actually care about you and what you're going through. He just answered my prayer. He's so good. I wonder if he'll do the same for Mamie. I wonder if Mamie needs something. You mean, I'm full. I just, I just got answered prayer. I just got answered prayer. It was so good. I was trusting him. He's so good. I, now that I'm full and I'm, my, my, I'm not focused on my problem, I wonder if he'd answer Mamie for what she's going through. 
I wonder if he cares about, hey, do you know what? He'll do it too. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, can you put up as well Hebrews 11.1? 1? You did already. Now look at this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. That substance that we just talked about, that hope substance, here he's saying this, faith is that. That substance that gets all over you, that in-between substance, that hope, that confident expectation, that's what your faith is. Boy, you can attach that, hey? I am confidently expecting that God is going to do something good. Amen. This is the binding substance. that bind Actually, God calls that faith what I'm hoping and trusting that he is good according to his word and he's going to answer the things that I'm asking. Amen. This substance, this binding substance right in between faith and love is called hope. Now, sometimes I feel like I don't have a whole bunch of faith, but I sure got a lot of hope. I am hoping, Lord, that you would add to this place, that you would multiply it according to your word. Yeah. Yeah. And Lord, even if it's not in this house, maybe it's online, but however you do it, I'm going to believe that you're God of the multiplication. Yeah. That as we speak your word, you are faithful and you begin to add. Lord, your word in the book of Acts said you added to them daily those who were being saved. So Father, as we commit our ways to you, I am confidently believing and hoping in your goodness that you're going to do this, God. He calls that faith, and he says, without that, it's impossible to please him, which would cause me to stumble before. I don't have enough, I don't please God, but I sure have enough hope. And it's the goo, it's the substance that draws me right in between faith and leads me into his love. Where are you going to find that? I love all my neighbors and stuff. I love all that. But that substance is found only in one place. It's found in the Lord and it's in you. Amen? And you, online. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So that, I think it was Angie and I were talking about that on, on Tuesday. That makes you and I a hope dealer. Yeah, that's right, yeah. You're like covert hope yeah. dealers right now. You get to go out and, yeah. and you get to move and have your being and see if people, you need any? How much you need? How much you need? Huh? You need. I got what you need. Yeah. You're the, you're the middleman. You're the middleman. You're a hope dealer. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to fire some more scripture at you. That's where our hope comes from. Uh, Romans 15, please. Look at this. I'm blown away by the word of God. You know, you, you think that you're in, in a church and some, some guy or woman standing up there and just firing some scripture at you that maybe should make you feel better. This is, this is the, the testing of our faith right now, these hours that we live in. And here is the Lord coming forth and in his word saying this, I'm not just God. I'm the God of of hope. And I'm going to fill you with all joy and peace as you're believing. That gooey substance right in between that's in you, that binds to faith, that leads you to his love, that hope, he's the God of it. So when you're out there dealing it and giving it away, your source in the world is where they go for the big bust, where they're making all the stuff. Yeah, he's God. He's the God of that substance called hope. He's where we go and we deal it out from. Him, God of hope. And he fills you with all joy and peace. You go to places, whether it's this church, you can even go to that perfect gift store. And last year, especially when we go and we'd minister to people and people would come in, every single time they'd walk in, ah, and their tears are coming down and people are, Why? Because they had such joy and peace in believing because the God of hope was there. You step into a place like the perfect gift store where you can't even afford gifts for your, your ch children anymore 
and you feel that shame and you feel that condemnation which is from the devil, you feel like you're subpar, like you're not even enough of a person to buy for your kids, and in, you, you, maybe you go through the door into that place thinking, wow, I'm just, I just want to get through this because this is a shameful thing. But the moment you step into it, instead of feeling shame, you start to feel a God of hope. And this joy and this peace comes on you and all of a sudden they're believing anything is possible. How much more the church of Jesus Christ? Amen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! When hope abounds... I see you as precious. That's needed right now, amen? Ambassadors of hope. Dealers of hope. Amen. I'm going to hit you again with some more scripture. Put it up there, please. 1 Peter 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to what? Say it. Uh, I want you to just not just speak it, but get this. So you look, go ahead and look it up in the Greek, and here's what it means. Alive. Get this. Get this in you. This hope, this substance that binds faith and love, this thing that makes your faith come true, that answers, that draws you into the love of God. Here, First Peter is saying this, yeah, that hope, that substance, it's actually alive. And it's a force. And it moves out and it goes forth. It's alive. Amen. Say this, it's alive. I loved reading this actually. It actually kind of blew me away. This force, it's not something that's just uh, uh, static. It's alive. This hope is alive and it goes forward. It's this force that belongs inside the church. Amen? Okay. I'm going to tell you some more. Here it is. What's this hope? Why do, you, why do you have hope? Why do you have it? Because through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What is, what is actually my hope in? It's, Peter says it right here. This living hope that's alive, that moves around, it binds faith to love. Here's what it's in. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead. He said that he would come. He did. He said that he would take all of my sin, your sin. He said he'd take it all. And he said he would take it onto the cross and die for us. He did it. And then he said this, I'm going to raise three days later. I will raise to brand new life. I will defeat death. I will defeat sin. I will defeat the devil. You cast down this building three days later, it shall be raised up, and I shall go to glory and sit on the right hand of the Father and ever live to make intercession for you. And he did it. If Jesus, Paul said, if Jesus never was resurrected from the dead, then we are the most pitiable of all men. But he did it. What is my hope in? His cross. He was resurrected. He was raised from the dead. Amen. That means this. He said this. If I go to the Father, oh, you're coming too. See, I go and I make a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. And while you're here, for your limited stay on this earth, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to give you my spirit. I'm going to give you my word. It'll be like a sword to you. I'm going to give you this tremendous armor. I'm going to give you faith. I'm going to give you this abundance of this substance in between that ties faith and love together. You are going to be my ambassadors of hope. I will be with you. Amen? Amen. What's my hope in? That. Amen. Okay. I want you to take your... If you brought your Bibles, please go to your Bible. If you brought your phone, please browse through your phone to the book of Hebrews. Thank you, Lord. God, thank you for your presence today. Thank you for your word that goes forth and destroys strongholds. Thank you that you're our hope. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Hebrews 10. There's too much here to put on a screen. Hebrews 10, verse 19. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that even now it demolishes strongholds. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. How do you get boldness? Well, confidence that he's good to you. By a new and living way, just like Peter said, a living hope, for which uh, through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. What is that evil conscience? It's usually an unregenerated spirit or reverting back. It's fear, it's doubt, it's unbelief. And when that comes, especially in a season like this, it makes you an enemy. That's an evil conscience. An evil conscience is usually selfish and it only cares about itself. And when that happens, it reverts back and then you become an enemy. And the Lord is saying this, no, you're sprinkled from that. I've cleansed you from that. Verse 23, let us hold fast to our confession of hope. What's our confession of hope? Jesus that he's come for me, that he's saved me, that he's delivered me. Amen? Without wavering, for he was promised as faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Ambassadors and agents of hope that belongs to us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Angie come and read a scripture for me, please. 1 Thessalonians 4. I want you to get this into you. Um, as much as we're ambassadors of hope, I want you to know what your hope is in. And so I'm going to have her read this hope. There's a, there's a day coming, and it's probably a lot closer than when we used to preach it before. And this is what this day sounds like. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Hold on. Did you get that? He's saying this, I don't want you to be like other people who have no hope. Okay. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Keep going. <laughs> For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Can we give the Lord a praise clap just for that? <laughs> what a promise! And maybe a lot closer than what we know. That's the promise. That's the reason of our hope. Therefore, he says this, comfort one another with these words. Now, here's my comfort to you. You're going to heaven. But it's because you know Jesus and he loves you. And he's with you. And he's given you this hope. Therefore, children of God, God knows your beginning from the end. He knows when you were born. He ordained it. He also knows when you're going. Okay, he ordained that too. He knows your life. He knows that it's a puff of smoke, but he knows all of your days. Therefore, we don't have to fear as those who have no hope for that hope he's given you. It's called a living hope and he put it in you. 
You're going to heaven, you know Jesus. It's already been a done deal. And then he's given us exceedingly great and precious promises. But if you don't know Jesus and you don't have this hope, then today's for you. So I, I'm actually going to ask all of us to stand in this place, please. And for those online that I can't see you and, and maybe, maybe you don't have this precious hope in you, maybe you don't know about that goo that binds the binding agent between faith and hope, maybe you don't know that yet. And what Angie read about that one day when Jesus comes for us and he takes us and we get to meet with all the brothers and sisters who went before us and we meet in the air. Maybe you don't know that. But today you can. Thank you, Father. Lord, thank you for your word that goes forth in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, thank you that you've called us and you've, you've made us ambassadors of hope. But even as we spoke about hope today, Lord, there's people who need to know. They need to know that that hope they can have as well. There's the hope music. Thank you, Lord. Lord, there isn't some sort of cut and dry process with you. There's not some sort of robotic way. Lord, you're our hope. You're our great reward. So Jesus, if there is anyone that does not know you and does not have that hope that, Lord, if they died, they don't know where they would be. They don't know if they'd be with you. They don't have that assurance that you're with us all through life. Father, I want to extend that hope. I want to extend Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, to those people today. Now, if that's you and you want to know that, that assuredness, that hope, that Jesus will wipe away all of your sin, all the shameful things that we have done, and not only that, he'll make you clean and white and right with him. And not only that, but he's gone to heaven to make a place for you. You can have this hope and that assuredness. That when you die, whenever that is, you will be with him. And when you're here, you can know him, have him speak to you and grant and give you peace and hope. Let's say this together then. Say, Jesus. I want to know this hope. And so I ask you today, would you be my Lord and Savior? I don't want to fear anymore. Be afraid of people. Be afraid of death. So I turn away from old things and I ask forgiveness where I've messed up and sinned against you. I don't want that life anymore. But I ask you, Jesus, would you come into my heart and fill me today and be my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on a cross for me to take away all my sin and draw me back to God the Father. Would you give me and grant me this hope in Jesus' name? Amen. Now, Father, I pray over each person here today. Lord, would you allow hope to rise up in Jesus' mighty name in each person that we would be those people, the dealers of hope. Lord, that we would abound in this hope. And that you say, Lord, that that joy and peace would be ours. So God, would I just do this, Lord. In each one. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, Holy Spirit, I'm going to ask that you would just flow and, and speak to your people in this hour. And even as we've been hearing and sensing, Lord, dreams and visions and tremendous things happening. Father, we want to be those who are found believing that you are multiplying your church and drawing us closer and closer to you. 
Let us go forward this week, Lord, and do the mighty acts and the mighty great things, Lord, that we're believing you for. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, we're, we're kind of banned from people's homes.